Hi everybody, this is Arthur with the day in Telos. And it's December 20, 2000, oh, 2011, 2011. It's the first day of December. So, so many things are going to be happening. Uh, Santa Claus is getting ready to deliver all his uh, presents to all the, all the people, not just the children, but all the people. And this year is going to be very special. So, we're getting ready for a countdown to 2012. Keep that in mind. We have special uh, shows coming up uh, in 2011. In fact, we're going to be doing a new, um, we're going to do a, a whole new round of Ascension shows and Raising Your Vibration, um, Nutrition, and more music. Um, one of the things that uh, I'd like to uh, bring about is uh, we're going to do a contest on what the best subject was for uh, uh, 2011. There's a new idea that I thought. Why not have a prize, uh, maybe even a cash prize, for the, the best uh, subject uh, show? for uh, uh, 2011, so keep that in mind. If you have a subject and you think it's really can uh, go right over the top, uh, and you can win, uh, there'll be a lot of money there. We haven't decided how much, but I, I kind of think it'll be in the thousands for the best first runner-up. So keep that in mind. I can do about... Um, 40 shows a year, uh, but I need help. I can do uh, six to eight shows a, a month, but it takes a lot of studio time to put that together, and the subjects, and the music, and the people that really want to participate. Because this is Mount Shasta, and we are the voice of Mount Shasta from this point. And this is mctv15.org. This is a studio that we rent to do all the shows from Mount Shasta area. And my show, which is our show, presents King Arthur and the Round Table. Yeah, the Round Table. And how many people are actually going to be showing up for, as knights and the maidens? Well, we're looking forward to that. Hey, today I have a, a guest, and her name is Sarah. Sarah, what's your last name? I never did catch that. Wellborn. Oh, very nice. So how long have you been here in Mount Shasta? I have been here for several years, and I was coming here on and off regularly before I moved here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, are you married, single? You have children? I'm married. You're married, mm -hmm. and you have children? I do. Oh, okay. I have a child. How many? One. One, all right. Mm -hmm. So. You've been here for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and what drew you up here to the point that you decided you were going to move here? Um, I came here for WESAC. I actually had a vending booth at WESAC, and I kept on coming uh, regularly to help facilitate with different things. One of them actually happened to be a Lady of the Lake ceremony in Castle Lake, which was interesting. I fell in love with Mount Shasta. Um, I found um, what this mountain does is it's where the inner and outer temple become one. So wherever you are within yourself, the transmission is direct. So it shows the people, the places, everything that happens around you uh, represents where you are within yourself. So I was having a direct materialization of my inner state of being. So I really loved that. It was a, a, like a light player's playground. Mm. And uh, I wasn't planning on moving here, but I had some intentions to bring in infinite supply here and um, help support some other light workers that I knew. 
and the mountain had a ploy to get me here because mm -hmm. I was building a retreat center at the time uh, in Tennessee and there From was a Tennessee yeah so there was a whole wow. ordeal that got me here wow that's a that's a ways away you know I, I have a show called what brought you to Mount Shasta mm -hmm. that, that we're going to be doing on December 15th so mm -hmm. you're invited okay. all right mm -hmm. uh, you can bring the whole family you can bring friends uh, mm -hmm. whatever it's all going to be the last show mm -hmm. of, uh, of 2010, mm -hmm. um, and we'll, dis we'll f find out how many shows that uh, w I was able to produce uh, in uh, 2010. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. I was shooting for pretty high, but I don't think I got it. But maybe first, maybe second place. We'll see. But we'll be counting about that. Okay. We might even pick out a couple of uh, best, best shows mm -hmm. of uh, 2010. So. We'll keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's any uh, friends you want to bring, uh, invite them, please. Okay. And it'll be three to three to six. Okay, same great. time, we, and it'll be at our mm -hmm. show. So, you had this yearning to help other light workers here, mm -hmm. and then eventually, you moved in mm -hmm. to this uh, to Mount Shasta. So mm -hmm. You've been here two years now. Uh huh. All right. Yes. So, now that you're here, what? are you manifesting mm -hmm. for your prosperity, um, for your spiritual prosperity? Well, this mountain is, has a very special alchemy here. It's uh, somewhat like uh, any powerful mountain on the planet where you've got a volcanic source that creates a, um, it's, a it's like a current that flows through the earth mm -hmm. through maybe the alchemy of gold or silica through the crystal or water which is also like a crystal it's very conductive so it brings everything up here and um, that's why the water is so electric right so it, it, it basically it pushes everything up within yourself so you can start uh, really seeing where you're at spiritually ah. and so when you're really seeing directly where you're at um, you're able to um, clear and align with the light Right. Very right. quickly. Work very more quick. with the light. And then you're also amplifying that also through the grid, through the planet. So when you come here, is it's, it's a responsibility to continue to show up with a really nice vibration because that's also being transmitted uh, through the airwaves and also through the circuitry of the earth because mm. of the circuits coming here to the. Yes, um, yes. Isn't it's like it a pyramid. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, you know, talking about pyramid, when I had some property mm. uh, just outside of Corning, and mm -hmm. on the on piece of property, there was a little mountain, mm -hmm. uh, a little, little knoll that I could sit on and see Mount Shasta. And it was a pyramid. Uh -huh. It was a pyramid from uh, on the other side of Reading. And mm -hmm. I was like, it's like, wow, it's a pyramid. And I just, mm -hmm. you know, and you just said that. I was mm -hmm. like, yep, it and is And with the, the snow on it, it's a crystalline pyramid because the crystalline. snow is, the water is like crystal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got a crystalline pyramid. So it's super amplification from the inside out. And that's why um, I feel that some of us have shown up here to amplify um, these light vibrations and transmit right. good, really positive thought forms over the airwaves. Yes, yes. And being in the one, one thing I like being here in weed mm -hmm. um, is that the, the heart is on this side. Mm -hmm. And I always feel like I'm walking in the heart mm -hmm. when I can... Uh, 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 reflect the heart mm -hmm. and in, in people and, and in the surroundings and, mm -hmm. and it, just is, it just makes sense to be here if uh -huh. you're walking from the heart. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, this whole area, this whole area, like you said, the pyramid and mm -hmm. so uh, is there a specific um, 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 subject that you want to touch on today? I do. I would like to um, share about uh, several different things around um, human beings being like radios and also transmitters okay. and how we pick up on thought forms and vibrations and how we can clear and align ourselves to what I feel is uh, our sacred heart is uh, what the I believe heart. to be uh, the gateway to eternity which is um, like the golden light that flows through all things so there's lifetimes where we show up in many different forms, uh, maybe mm -hmm. all at the same time, if there's no space and time, it's all happening simultaneously. And that if we align with eternity, then we are a direct outpouring of divine source in its purest 
whatever vibration or vibration, yes. um, so would like to s talk about some of the things that we pick up on uh, whether it's radio stations that are playing or people's thought forms or even walking into a room where maybe there was an argument and all of a sudden you're feeling anger and knowing the difference between your own stuff and what's going on in the airwaves. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, do you ever pick up animal um, thoughts? Um, yeah, I think I, I think I do. Well, I pick up uh, also on plants, their mm -hmm. vibrations and what they're communicating. The vibrations of the plants. And yeah. they do communicate, the plants communicate. Oh, yeah. I've been oh, getting yeah. more of the, a connection with the plants lately they've been talking I'll, to I'll me. Hug a tree. There's a reason <laughs> for that. Get that, get that uh -huh. information mm -hmm. that they've been there mm -hmm. for so long. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. You know, um, while we're talking about this, mm -hmm. I, I, I had a, a near-death experience uh, mm -hmm. about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And after that, I started having um, the singing going on in mm -hmm. my in in my head mm -hmm. at certain times of the uh, of the month, not mm -hmm. all the time, but just certain mm -hmm. times. And at first, you know, I just thought, okay, I, I know when you have near death experiences, you come back endowed with mm -hmm. with a certain power mm -hmm. or your own power more. And so I kind of listened to what was going on for a couple, uh, little while. Mm -hmm. And then I started embracing it and singing with it. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying that this, this sounds like a heavenly choir. Mm -hmm. and it, it seemed like it was only men singing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, so I started um, making up my own songs and mm -hmm. then they were, they were singing with me. And then mm -hmm. I'd concentrate and try to sing the song that, mm -hmm. that they were singing. Uh, so is that, uh, where is that thought wave? Where is that mm. wavelength well, it feels in, the, like in the field of the brain? Are, are you, do you know, or is it out here? Well, what I've come to the conclusion is that we have a transcendent aspect, which is more of like what we call the, uh, more of the, uh, it's what we call di like great father spirit or God mm -hmm. or divine source. It's uh, the transcendent part. It's the right. untouchable part. And then you do have the earthly, which is more of like mother energy, what you would say Gaia or earth energy. So our bodies are, um, they are the earth. This is like a microcosm of that. Mm -hmm. So um, they all kind of come together and work together for these, you know, it's, it's all of it. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. just one part. And so it sounds to me like you visited, whether you want to call it your own inner earth or the heavenly realms, you went into that uh, gate, you know, you went into that gate and you uh, access something and now you're transmitting from that place. Right, right. I, I feel like when I really meditate with it, uh, I feel like I'm there in, in this uh, another dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm just going to say the a fifth mm -hmm. dimension. Right. Because uh, uh, I just think that's probably where mm -hmm. it's at. Mm -hmm. But I, if I meditate with it, and then it goes away, mm -hmm. and then I hear a, um, like a, a white airwave that you mm -hmm. might have on a mm -hmm. radio, and right. shh, mm -hmm. and then I hear that really lightly uh -huh. for most of the month, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it gets louder and louder and mm -hmm. louder, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. I can hear the. No. It's important to tune into the stations of love. Yes. So whether they're coming from the airwaves or broadcasts or even the heavenly realms or any realm at that or angelic realm that we're tuning into um, airwaves of love. I, I do have an interesting story to share with you about okay. this. Um, I took this uh, indigo kid on a journey to the water one day, but I said, I'm just going, you know, by myself, so I'm not really going to communicate with you. I just want to kind of, but you're welcome to come along because he wasn't from Shasta. So we went by the water and we were in separate areas. And that day I heard coming from the water um, techno music. And I said, mm. sure enough, the elementals and fairies couldn't possibly be playing techno music through the water. Wow. It has to be this kid because he listens to that. I knew he listened to that kind of music. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. I changed the channel and some other music was playing through the water. Wow. So at the end of the day, I found out this wasn't just a hallucination that the kid came up to me and told me the whole experience. It was exactly the, wow. the same as my experience. And what I learned was that we're made up of water and crystalline, you know, yeah. silica in our bones. And so when you're completely on a harmonic, uh, and you're in a harmonic place at peace, you're not worried, you're not into duality in your thinking, 
you're like a clear crystal. Mm -hmm. And so you can send and receive through the conductivity of the water in a crystal in place like Mount Shasta. Wow, um, exciting. Not only picking up on, say, the airwaves that is being broadcasted on a radio station, but actual music from someone else's head being played through the water and then pick up. But you have to mm -hmm. be out of um, duality or worry to be in that clear crystal so you can ha your body becomes like a clear crystal so you can receive and give those transmissions so um, that was one of the things I wanted to talk wow. about today how you that, get your that's exciting crystal to, clear. to uh, have you uh, explain that um, how we can be in contact mm -hmm. on the etheric and through the water because mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I do sweats Mm -hmm. And I pray, I change the, the, um, the, the water molecule into mm -hmm. a crystalline, mm -hmm. and I inhale that, and it uh, raises my vibration. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working with that for 10 years or more, mm -hmm. and just, just knowing that that is really a high, mm -hmm. um, a high, energy mm -hmm. exercise. Right. Well, when we move into, um, say for example, gratitude, um, that actually creates harmony in our body so that um, there's a purity and a clarity that can come through of d what I call divine will. But basically, wherever we come from, from the source, I believe is love. And so that's able to uh, flow through us and creativity can come through, things can, um, you can be artistic, you can come up with even new thoughts. Uh, it's like a creativity that comes through when you're in harmony. And so um, it's important for us to have harmony. A lot of people have trouble with that because they're in conflict. And so one of the things I wanted to share is how we can actually, because you know we can be aware that there's a mass consciousness and that we're picking up on mass consciousness or on radio stations it could be a religious radio station we're picking up on i've had that experience where i was picking up on christian radio without hearing it i went up on the mountain i had the same transmission that this hmm. priest and then when i turned it on i was like whoa i'm on the mountain and i'm having the same transmission so i was like what do i trust because i understand that it's very important for us to go into trust so i decided mm -hmm regardless of whether I was picking up on, um, say for example, I wrote a song or came up with an invention and somebody uh, across the world came up with it the same week and we're picking up on the same stuff. What is it that I trust if there's all these thought forms and these broadcasts going on that I'm picking up? So I decided to create that harmonic field within my body and the clarity. I would trust anything and everything that comes from a place of love because mm -hmm whether it's an archetypal story, whether it's true or not, even my words, it's a vehicle for energy or mm -hmm. consciousness. Yep, yep. And so we can trust something that serves love within ourselves and also for the whole. So that's how you know when it comes from divine source is that it's serving in a loving way, everybody and also the self. And so when you have that clarity within yourself, you're not fighting between what's right or wrong or truth or not truth. That's the ego, I think, that mm -hmm. says, oh, that's not, that's not the way to do it. And then you have your, your spirit that goes, just relax mm -hmm. and listen. And it's very important what we give ourselves to. In fact, if we were broadcasting a program on earthquakes and tornadoes and you had millions of people tuned into earthquakes and tornadoes, there would be a trembling in the body or fear. And since our physical body is not disconnected from the earth, it could actually create that because mm -hmm. when we take a deep breath in, we're actually taking a deep breath into our own inner earth, the solar mm. plexus, which is like That's divine right. will. Yeah. And so it's very important that we give ourselves to the consciousness of love and choose the thought forms that be can become a gift for the divine energies to come through, that we are the gift. We are the microcosm rippling it out all this divine energy so um, for me i give myself and i surrender myself to that which is coming from a loving place which i believe that the highest vibrations come from the sacred heart which is the gateway to eternity that is where the transcendent comes into the earthly body and fully manifests that glory that like the heaven on earth that we're grounding that 
And so anything that is not of a high vibration or uh, connected to that source of eternity actually falls away right. over, you know, beyond space and time. N those lower vibrational things are purified and cleared. Right. Eternity right. is only of the light. So every moment that we choose to show up in love, we are choosing to show up to actually embody eternity. So mm -hmm. if you want to show up in eternity, show up in your heart. So these are the transmissions that we can create a pathway in consciousness for the whole planet and beyond, multidimensionally, whatever you want, to, whatever you so choose, that we are part of a creational field. And the creational field is, actually comes from the sacred heart. This is like the thing that actually moves everything, even mm -hmm. though we may not always see that with right. our eyes. So um, I feel that it's important for um, for for us to realize that rather than pick up on all this stuff that creates a, you know, disharmony, mm -hmm. there's no creational field that can come out of that. Divine will comes through the clarity. So it's our choice to say, I will be uh, clearing the path like a pathfinder. Right. And so you're, you're clearing a path for consciousness. So when we have positive creational fields, whether the stories are true or not, it can be like a fairy tale. And we're mm -hmm. like children, divine children make believing or make making real exactly. we are clearing the airwaves with a beautiful consciousness and it makes it more available for everyone else whether mm -hmm. it's in the unseen etheric or airwaves but it's also the physical body because there are patterns in the brain and in the circuitry of our own body those pathways are also cleared in the fabric so when i have a very positive thought that's more, the more of us that do that, it, and it's a higher vibration, of course, mm -hmm. everybody else on the planet can access that because it's of a high frequency. So that's what we want to be putting out. We want to be putting out um, a positive, a positive thought, thought, vibration, and vibration, yeah. because the thought form actually creates an opening. It's just a container. And one of the things that I do is, you know, you wake up in the morning or you go to sleep at night before and you, um, it's kind of like, I feel that fe anything that comes from fear base is a program. And eternity is actually not a program. What it is, it's beyond programming. It's a, it's a clear surrendered channel. And when we go into the trust of love and that our heart is coming from purity, then when mm -hmm. something comes into our field that is not of that vibration and resonance, we know that it is not of us if we're coming from source. And so in the day right. when something comes into our field, like an angry thought or something that doesn't seem very pure, we know that is not from us if we're plugged into source and, you know, we've set the exactly. tone, we've exactly. re-imprinted. That's one of those, over here, somebody else is doing it. Yeah, so yeah. it's something else that we're, it could be like a, a global program that's mm -hmm. been going on. It could be that... You're tuning into somebody that was angry at the stoplight, and all of a sudden you're feeling a little angry because somebody did this, and normally you're not, and you're not feeding into that. So, exactly. you know, you this know, is like not that me. That does happen to me, and mm -hmm. I really have to be careful in larger cities mm -hmm. and uh, apartments and things like mm -hmm. that and right. stores and stuff like that because uh -huh. it does... Uh, it does pick up. Hey, do you have, uh, we only have a few few more mm -hmm. minutes here. Mm -hmm. uh, 28 minutes goes okay. by is really quick. So is there any uh, last uh, th uh, thought that you would like to, uh, hey, it's a fairy. <laughs> uh, a last thought that uh, you'd like to give the public. I would. Um, I would like to express that um, we're in a very special time now, which all time is very special, but um, in this moment in time, um, the creational field has shifted where it's not based on a limited, uh, say, physics, but it's based on our heart's knowing. And so as we know something to be in our heart, it is, mm -hmm. and that we are in a creational field that we can um, basically create an infinite, beautiful reality mm. um, based on our hearts knowing. Right and I here. just want to, right here, right, right now, here. and we right can um, be a part of that beauty. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to fulfill divine will in the physical, in this um, earthly realm, that this is a gift that we got to, came, that we've come here. And sometimes it seems difficult, but if we would just remember 
the transcendent part of ourselves and also the beautiful uh, Mother Earth and the beauty of the forest, that this is also a gift that rather than trying to run away or transcend this place, mm -hmm. that as we go into gratitude for gratitude. the gifts of where we are, yes. that we will be a vehicle for a new creation that comes from divine will and it'll be the biggest gift that we've ever received mm -hmm. and going mm -hmm. into total service of that, um, it's just gonna be so much fun. Like divine children Create receiving Create from mother, heaven. father, divine source. You know, they, uh, I, I see these little postcards every once in a while. It says Mount Shasta, um, heaven on earth, or close, cl cl closer than heaven than anywhere mm -hmm. else, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, and I really, uh, I really think that there, there's a, a, a big truth to that. Well, we're the res we are like containers. And so if we are, uh, like say, a glass container that's in the shape of the heart, the water goes into the shape of the heart. If, it, if you have like a glass container, container that's the shape of a monster, the water goes into the ca container as a shape of a monster. So we are the containers. We have free will choice yep. to align ourselves to receive pure divine beingness. And um, I would just hope that we can gather together and our consciousness and weave paths of infinite freedom and liberation with such a clear intent that we can have a direct manifestation right in front of our eyes of the beauty. Absolutely. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, that was Sarah and <laughs> I really appreciate her being here because she just kind of fills the gap with the thought of where we're going in 2012, all those that are here around the world and here that are going to be uh, ascending from this area, um, there, there's great possibilities. Hey, I want to uh, show you, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, but this is uh, my new business card. And then back here. And, and what I wanna uh, do is just, let you know that if you need a producer, come see me. And if you want to be on this show, call me. And if you'd like to donate anything this next year, we'll take it because somebody else will need it and we'll give it to them. All right? If you've got anything, oh, Mr. Santa Claus is here. I want to let you know that he is happy and he is willing to uh, come to your house this year and next year. All right, Sarah, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate blessings, you Blessings, infinite here. blessings to all. And this is uh, Arthur, a day with a day in Telos. <laughs>